around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Get your boots on. Let's go. Um, listen here. Come on, get up, Har. We're right. I ain't no call to throw no water on me, Ollie. Well, you sleep. You just luck I didn't use coffee. Come on now. Get up. Oh. All right, all right, all right. Uh, now, I don't know why we have to move so early. It's because I want to get this here stuff to Texas before the law starts sniffing around after us. Will you get that saddle on your horse? Well, all right. But Molly won't even be up. <laughs> we ain't gonna wake her, neither. What do you mean, we ain't? I mean, we're heading straight for the border, and we ain't making no stops. Now, listen here, Ollie. You told me if I come into this with you, I could take Molly along. Well, I decided different. You just hold us up. It wouldn't do no such thing. Molly can ride even with you any time. A woman gets in the way. Now, that's all there is to it. I ain't going without her. Oh, you young pup. I ain't, Ollie. You need my horse, too, to help carry that gold, but you can't have it without we stop for Molly. She ain't even got a horse to ride. We took them both. All right, then. Let's get her a horse. You're good enough at stealing. Oh, I should have never took you on this job. You couldn't have pulled it without me, Ollie. And I ain't going all the way to Texas without... All me. right. All right, Ollie. But just get a move on. And if we don't find a horse by noon, the deal is off. That's fair enough. But I'll find one. Don't you worry none about that. <laughs> Come on, Chester. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, uh, oh. This kind of a shock, isn't it? Oh, my life. I got to hand it to you, though, Chester. How's that, Mr. John? You hung on to that bar of soap. How come you brought it along in the first place? Well, I tell you, a man don't never know when he's going to need a bath. Well, you'll get a chance to take one. That's right, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> well, sir, that is exactly right. And by Jing, I believe in being prepared. Well, that's fine, Chester, but how about letting me use it for a while? You're pretty well lathered up. Well, sure thing, Mr. Dillon. I didn't mean to make a pig of myself. Yeah. Yeah, more like a mad dog. Thanks. <laughs> It's a nice little fool, ain't it? Yeah. Pity water would look good after that three-day ride. Mm, sir, I guess you're right. Uh, can you swim good, Mr. Jones? I like to keep afloat. That's real nice. I can swim real strong myself. Well, let's see you do it. Well, there's just one thing wrong. I, I swim so strong, I keep going under the water. <laughs> You better stick to the land. Oh, yes, sir. I mostly do. <laughs> hey, somebody's coming, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Maybe somebody else wants a bat. <laughs> I reckon they do. They're coming towards us right now. Uh huh. Hey, 
Hey, they're heading for our horses. Yeah. Hey, you. You just stay right where you are so you don't get hurt. Leave those horses alone. He's shooting. Yeah, we're going to stay where we are. That's more like it. Come on, I'll get both them horses. And I will use this pair. Sure, I'll. Hand me them bridles. Now you go get the gun. Sure, I'll. Hey, he's taking your gun, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I should have known. Or get the boots, too. Your boots? That's what I said. <laughs> All the slow them down, sir. Say, I don't know who you men are, but you better think this over. This here's Mr. Dillon, the U.S. Marshal from Dodge. Well, fancy that now. I'm real pleased to meet you, Marshal, and I am thinking it over real good. Come on, They're getting away, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I know it, Chester. But we're not in a position to do much about it. Truth, Mr. Dillon, I didn't never think we'd make it this far. Uh-huh. I've saw folks who was mean in my time, but I ain't never saw nothing beat this. Yeah. Taking a man's boot, leaving him stranded way out on the prairie. Why, that ain't hardly human. All right. All right, Chester. What do you mean by all right? All right, that's what I mean. Well, there ain't nothing all right about it. Having your stuff stored like that? Would you like just that? quit talking about it, Chester? Well, Mr. Dillon, all a I'm A whole day to... and a night of belly aching ought to be enough for you. Well, all right, sir, Mr. Dillon, if you feel that way about it. That's exactly the way I feel about it, Chester. That's right. Very well, sir. Then I just won't talk none at all. Oh, good. Never. I won't even mention how terribly bad cut up my feet are Chester. and stole up and... Yes, sir. Couldn't we please sit and rest for a spell? Yeah, I guess we could. Sight for sore eyes. Well, what's the matter with you two? You just bucked off your horses? Well, you give us a lift, Doc. Well, if I ever saw a sorry looking pair to you two. Doc, we want a lift. When they hear about this at the Long Branch. Let <laughs> me look at you. Where are your boots? Never mind, Doc. Just give us a lift, will you? How long have you been walking? A night and a day, Doc. And that's an awful long time. Let me see your feet. I sure will. Oh, well, get in. Get in. What are we waiting for? I think I better get you two up to my office right away. Some for you, Chester. Nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's hot, Doc. Well, it's meant to be. Hot. 
I tell you, I've never seen a pair of feet to beat these. I suppose you quit talking about it and write it up in a medical paper instead. Yeah, oh, well, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I guess you'd just as soon not hear any more about it. Yeah. But you've no idea who did it. No, I never saw him before. Who would you recognize him? I'm not sure. The light wasn't very good. We weren't exactly close. Well, I ain't never going to forget him, I can tell you that. Chester, when you spot him, you just let me know. That's all I ask. Yes, sir, Mr. Jones. I sure will do that. Well, you both better hope you don't spot him. For a few days, at least. Oh, how's that? <laughs> You're not going to be able to do much walking. Well, I can walk, Doc. Not very much, you can't. Those feet of yours are in bad shape. And uh, I'll just tell you something else. Now what? You're not going to be able to get your boots on for about a week. Oh, uh, what kind of a doctor are you? Huh? I don't know what kind of a doctor I am, but I know one thing for sure. Yeah? I never had to walk home from any place without my boots. Now, listen, Doc. Look at that easy to over No, Now, oh, you see, you spill that water. <laughs> ah, thanks, Sam. Sure, Marshal. Well, you must be feeling like yourself again, Matt. How's that, Kitty? You sitting here having a drink like a human being. You haven't snapped anybody's head off yet? No. Oh. I guess I haven't been too easy to have around. Well, you're never easy, but this week you've been worse than usual. Well, I'll say this for you, Kitty. Man has a hard time getting swell headed around here. I should think you'd thank me. I don't know why. Well, it would be a shame if you couldn't get your hat on now that you've just started being able to wear boots again. Oh, that's very funny, Kitty. I'm sorry, Matt. You're walking all right again now, aren't you? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm glad. That was a terrible thing. Yeah. Well, I'll be... Kitty, huh? excuse me a minute, will you? Oh, sure. There's a man at the bar over there I want to see. Business? It might be. I'll be back. Want another drink, Marshal? No, thanks, Sam. Not right now. No, any time. You, young fella. Um, me? Mm-hmm. You're new in town, aren't you? You're just riding through. Oh, where are you headed? Well, uh, I ain't decided. It's a nice pair of boots you got there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you see... A little big for you, aren't they? Well, no, no, they ain't. Why don't you walk over to the table and back, huh? I ain't gonna... I said walk. Well, sure, Marshal. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, they're a little wobbly, all right. Where'd you get them? Uh, they was my pa's. Uh, pa gave them to me. They're mine, aren't they? Well, now... They're my boots, and your name's Harb. Yeah. Yeah, Marshal, you're right. I'm glad you found out. You weren't very anxious to help me find out. Yes, I was. I was scared is all. I was even thinking to come to see you. This isn't my office. Well, I figured maybe a couple of drinks and I wouldn't be so scared. All right. Tell me the story. I want to lead you to him, Marshal. Oh? Who is he? He's my brother, Ollie. He told me if I'd help him with a hold-up, I would never have to worry no more. I see. And you're worrying? He's run off from me. With the money? Well, I don't care so much about the money thing I can't abide is he run off with my girl. Oh, do you know where they went? Sure I do. There's an old spread. My pa used to work in Texas. That's where he's heading. And you want me to go get him, huh? No, I sure do, Marshal. He ain't got no right to my girl. How about the money? Well, like I say, I don't care too much about the money, Marshal. Uh-huh. Can we start today? They got an awful good start on us. I'll let you know. You stay around till you hear from me, huh? Sure, but ain't we wasting time? You just do what I say. Don't leave town. All right, Marshal, if you say so. I say so. Uh, 
I'll bring them in, Mr. Jones. No. Uh, thanks, Chester. Didn't look like there's anything worth nothing in it. Uh-huh. Circular and all. <sighs> Mr. Jones? Yeah. I've been wondering something. Yeah? Yes, sir. Well, I figure when I get to pondering like this, I might just well come right on out with All it. All right, Chester. Come right on out with it. What is it? What do you want? What is it? Well, sir, I've been wondering why we were just sitting here in Dodge instead of heading to Texas after that Ollie Bean like his brother wants. Well, that's a long way to Texas, Chester. Well, sure it is, but my gracious, Mr. Jones, he's a hold-up man, ain't he? Oh, we're not sure of that. Not sure of that. He stole our horses and our guns and our boots, didn't he? Yeah, he did that all right, but I'm not sure the government would think I ought to ride all the way to Texas after your boots. Well, but what about the holdup? Well, that's just it. What about it? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, we don't even know if there was a holdup. Or maybe just trying to get us to go after Ollie with him. Well, but why would he make up a story like that? Well, he could have done it to get even with Ollie for running off with his girl, couldn't he? Well, yes, sir, you could be right about that, but... I... Oh, hello, Miss Kitty. Hello, Chester. Matt. Hello, Kitty. Is it time for me to take you to lunch already? Oh, you don't sound very eager. <laughs> I just had breakfast. Well, as a matter of fact, I came about something else. Oh, how's that? I was passing the telegraph office, and Mr. Hightower asked if I'd bring this to you. Oh. Here you are. Thank you. Oh. Good news? Well, Chester may think so. I will Mr. John. We can take that trip to Texas you've been so anxious for. That's all? The Bain brothers not only pulled a stage hold up, but they killed a man while they were in it. All right, come on. <laughs> Texas is an awful long way from anything. Yeah, it's better riding than walking, isn't it? Mm, yes, sir, it surely is that. Well, I reckon that was a pretty mean trick, taking your boots away like that. Pretty mean? A man that'd think up something like that is no more than a cannibal. It was Ollie's idea. Then I don't think much of your brother. I didn't think much of him anyway, of course, but... Oh, Ollie's a mean man. Well, why did you put in with him then, Harp? You talking about the holdup? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I reckon it don't make no sense no more, Marshal, but it was the first time Ollie ever treated me like I was worth anything. Oh. Yeah, he beat me and he cuffed me all the time when I was growing up. He never had no use for me. I shouldn't think you'd have had any use for him either. He was big and strong, Marshal. Yeah, all he could do about anything. I guess when he asked me to help with the holdup, I... I guess I figured he was getting some use for me. But he didn't, Marshal. As soon as he didn't need me no more, he ran off with my girl. Oh, he's a mean fellow, all right. We'll get him, won't we, Marshal? Yeah, I expect we'll get him. That's good. Not gonna be so good for you, though, Harvey. They'll want you for the holdup and the killing also. I know it, Marshal. You'd have been smarter to make a run for it by yourself instead of ever coming near Dodge. Well, I wanted you to get him. And I'm going to try. It ain't right for a man to run off with his brother's girl. What you said, we must be getting pretty close. That's right, Marshal. See them trees over there? Yeah. And the place is just behind them. All right, we'll ride up to them and look it over from there. Yes, sir. See? The shack is right over there. Yeah. We'll leave the horses here. (coughs) 
Take care of him, will you, Chester? Yes, I will. Come on. I'm going up there, Marshal. That might not be too smart, Harv. I just want to go and get my girl before the shooting starts. Man has a right to do that. Yeah, I guess he has it then. All right, go ahead. Thanks, Marshal. Wait a minute. What's the matter? I want you to remember something. If you don't come right out, I'll have to come in after you. Well, sure, I know that. I'll come right back. I can see you, Harv. I come for Molly. Well, go on back. She's mine. Not no more. She ain't. Go on, Harv. Oh, you better beat it while you still got a horse. I'm coming to get it. I warn you, Harv, go on back. I'm coming on. Miss Dillon? He shot that boy. Cover me. I'm going up there. He'll shoot you, too. I'll stick close to the trees and I'll cover me. Yes, sir. Chester, that shot was in the shack. Miss Dillon, look. That woman coming out. Yeah, I see her. Come on. You can take this gun now. You fired that shot? I killed Ollie. Never shot a gun before, but I killed Ollie. Take a look, Chester. Yes, sir. He's dead, Mr. Dillon. Check the other one, will you? Yes, sir. You don't have to look, Marshal. I know right away when Harb died. Yes, ma'am, I guess you did. She's right, Mr. Dillon. Man don't have no right to shoot his brother. No, he doesn't. Man don't have no right to run off with a woman, neither. And beat her and be mean to her. No, ma'am. But mostly a man don't have no right to shoot his brother. You should have let the law take care of it, ma'am. No, Marshal. I owed it to Harve. He wouldn't have expected it. I could have helped him before, and I didn't. I thought it was smart to come with Ollie. Ollie, he wasn't fit to shine Harv's boots. No, Marshal. I owed it to Harv. Whatever it cost. Well, ma'am, I... I just hope it doesn't cost too much. Next time you refresh, enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light, refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. Well, offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at dinner. Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty. Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and get an air. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. C.K., I'm sociable. With Pepsi, everyone is. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Gene Bates, and Lawrence Starkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty.
This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story of the Western Frontier. When Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke.